نستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير السنن سنن محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون فقال سبحانه وتعالى في مكان اخر ان ابراهيم كان امه قانتا لله حنيفا ولم يكن من المشركين اجتباه وهداه الى صراط مستقيم شاكرا لانعمي اجتباه وهداه الى صراط المستقيم صدق الله العظيم my dear brothers and sisters in islam we are passing through the first month of islamic calendar muharram this is the month to make some good resolutions in our life i thought that since we remembered prophet ibrahim alaihi salam in the last month month of zil hijjah and there are opportunity for muslims to remember the contributions of prophet ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam every time and every day that's why it is a good time to make a resolution to adopt some of the abrahamic principles in our life in the small verses which are recited which is from surah an-nahl chapter number 16 and verse number 120 and 21 allah tbaraka wa taala mentions about five characteristics of prophet ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam so i am in my khutbah i am mentioning the same thing five characteristics of ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam to adopt and emulate this is the topic of my khutbah today In this particular verse Allah tbaraka wa taala mentions about five important characteristics of Prophet Ibrahim alaihi salam and these characteristics are very rele- relevant even today and very relevant for the muslim community even today and Allah tbaraka wa taala says Allah has chosen Prophet Ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam to perform his mission based on these five characteristics So what are those five characteristics this is very important subject that we have to study and we have to emulate and we have to follow the first characteristic sallallahu tabaarak wa taala mentions inna ibrahim kana ummatan verily prophet ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam was an umma a community in his personality he was not one person he was like a community inna ibrahim kana ummatan so ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam was man of a mission normally we say that when people are very active doing so many things we say he is not an individual he is an organization in the similar manner allah tbaraka wa taala says that ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam is not an individual he is a community he is a umma so the first quality we have to adopt is we have to become a community a umma and this t- title is already given to muslim community in many places in quran for example quran in surah al-juma allah tbaraka surah al-hajj allah, tabarak, surat allah tabarak wa taala says millata abikum ibrahim you are the community of your father ibrahim alaihi salatu wassalam so this umma the title of umma or the community is already given to muslim community but with an addition there is another addition to your name the community the umma what is that addition 
kuntum khaira ummatin you are the best of community this is a special title given to muslim community and only to you not to anybody else now if anybody is entitled for this great title that's only you the muslim community that you are the khair ummah you are best of community kuntum khaira ummatin and a mission is also given what is your mission ukhrijat lin nas and you are raised up for the entire mankind your existence in this dunya is not only for the sake of muslim community you are not only the person working for the benefit and the development and the you know the uh, all kinds of concerns of the muslim community no your concern is entire human race you are raised up for the entire mankind kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lin nas and you have a great status that you are raised up for the entire mankind and what are you doing ta'maruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhauna 'anil munkar you are enjoying what is good and forbidding what is evil probably if i remember my previous khutbah was about this subject ta'maruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhauna 'anil munkar it's a great mission and this simple statement ta'maruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhauna 'anil munkar and joining what is good and forbidding what is evil is like a mission statement most of you are working in different companies and some are domestic companies some are international companies multinational companies and go and look for the mission statement of each company it looks very small and beautiful and it looks very you know complex and you can say in a complete form and it gives lot of meaning so this but you know based on that small mission statement you can see the existence of the company around the globe and so many activities going on and people are performing so many you know mission of the company so similarly this is a very small small statement and joining what is good and forbidding what is evil is like a mission statement you have so many things to perform you have a great mission to perform in order to understand since it is also month of muharram and month of hijra we have to understand we can understand from the story of hijra also how muslim community can perform the duty of an ummah a muslim community the first muslim community came into existence in madina in madina al munawwara in makka there was resistance there was opposition uh, there was a very tough atmosphere prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was facing tough resistance there was no freedom the first muslim community in the form of ummah came into existence in madina and you can see what first muslim community did in madina so many important things if you see those are very relevant task we can perform even today prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam addressed so many things human problems in madina and some are very important problem that were no those problems were not the problems of muslim community alone those problems were the problem of the madina itself the society of the madina so prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam addressed it for example one of the problem was scarcity of water that was a biggest problem in madina there was no water and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam initiated so many measure to address this issue for example he asked uthman bin affan radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu to purchase the well which belonged to a jewish person called bear roma and it was only well it was one of the well which never dries up and he was selling only to jews he was selling water only to jew uthman bin affan radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu it's a very long story to make it a simple story he went to the jewish person he negotiated with him and he asked to purchase that well he was not prepared so he gave another proposal why can't you give me with half ownership one day ownership is for me one day ownership is for you and he agreed for that he paid money he purchased it and jew was telling only to jewish people osman bin affan radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he showed to the world how muslim should deal with the resources of given by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now water river flowing and those river is a crisis many in many places for example in india you can see there are so many rivers 
there is river called Kaveri which flows between two states, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka and always it's a problem, water belongs to which state? And there is a river called Mahadai flows between Goa and Karnataka and always it's a problem, water belongs to which state? Both states are in India but again it's a big problem, not a small problem, everywhere it's, you know, it becomes a big public issue, people fight in the name of water and this is happening everywhere. So, and even at that time, it was happening, he was selling water only to Jewish people. Osman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu showed the Muslim characteristics. He said, water belongs to all and it is free. Today is my ownership, anybody can take water. Everybody came and they collected water. And the next day, it was a turn of Jewish person. He wanted to sell water next day. No one came because everybody took water previous day. It was a flourishing business for him, especially in summer. So then he understood Osman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu is a smart man. He said it's a half ownership, but I lost my control totally. Then he went to Osman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, take it in full ownership. But bargain was at that time with Osman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, I cannot pay the again that much money, half money which I have paid. Again, rest of the half I cannot pay. Now you have to bargain with me. How much I have to pay? So he paid little more money. He acquired it. Then he donated it. And it's there even today in Madinatul Manawara. And that's first waqf. And from there, the Awqaf ministry, ministry of Awqaf, ministry of endowment, it's there all over the world. All came into existence from that first waqf. And Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala. May Allah ta'ala bless him. His endowments and his donations, even today, are beneficial. All the adjacent lands of Madinatul Munawwara is acquired by Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala and donated. And that's the biggest waqf today. And people are benefiting from it. And there is a fundak Uthman bin Affan, even today in Madina, which is also a donation, which is the land is a donation from Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala. What I meant to say is that water crisis is, you know, forever. It is terminated in Medina. There was no water crisis anymore. Not only because of this, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu encouraged everybody to dig well. A gentleman came, he said, my mother passed away, what can I do for her? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, dig a well in her name. So people started digging well in the name of their deceased parents and everybody was encouraged to dig a well in order to benefit people. So in a you know, after some time, there was no water crisis at all in Medina. And also there was a big scarcity for grains. And this is again a human problem. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam addressed it. And he said, whoever cultivates a land, the land will be given to him. It was a barren land. It belongs to nobody. But Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you want to become a land owner, cultivate a land and you will be the owner. Land will be given to you. So people started cultivating. And that's how problem of grains was solved. Again, cleanliness was a big issue. People started becoming sick. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam supplicated to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allahumma habib ilayna al-madinata ka hubbina makkata au ashad. Wallah tabarak wa ta'ala make this Madina a lovely place for us. Like we used to love Makkah or more than that. You can say Prophet probably it is the... Uh, supplication and invocation of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Today you can see, find more serene atmosphere in Medina and it looks more clean and you will feel like living in Medina. And it was not like that. Makkah was a beautiful place at that time. Makkah was a very developed area. Medina was a backward area. Medina was uneducated area. Medina was unclean when Prophet Muhammad and his companions reached there. They made a big difference when, when they reached. They cleaned, they initiated a cleanliness drive and changed the entire Medina and, you know, made it a clean city and named it as Medina to Nabi. It was Esrib before and it became a new city called Medina to Nabi, a clean city. So, problem of cleanliness is also solved. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also established a new system called Mawakha. A brotherhood between the people who came from Makkah and people, for, uh, and people of Medina. And this Mawakha is also not just, you know, making two people together. Come, you came from Makkah, you live with him. No, it's not like that. It's like a strategic alliance. Like, like for example, Prophet Muhammad made a lot of homework. 
who can fit with whom and if they join together what they can do for their economic independence their financial development what they can do, do together he was making a lot of homework for example Abdurrahman bin Auf ta'ala, he was a businessman and uh, you know he was looking for a similar businessman and he found another business person probably his, I, I forgot the name Rabi some Rabi name comes as he was the companion of Abdurrahman bin Auf in Medina and they joined together and he was a businessman Abdurrahman bin Auf had a big business in Mecca, he left everything, but he had a business acumen. And they joined together, and it was like a strategic alliance, it was like a partnership. And they started doing business together. After some time, Abdurrahman bin Auf, radiyallahu ta'ala, who became a big businessman. Like that, if a man knows how to cultivate, another man in Medina has a land, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa made a strategic alliance. After some time, everybody became economically independent. Everybody became financially strong. So this is called Mu'akha. French are brotherhood between the two people and it is not making the parasite. One person is not a parasite to other. But it is a kind of strategic alliance that both of them combine together, forming a team and then, you know, becoming strong, doing something to become, you know, to achieve economic independence. And that was some, something great. And Prophet Muhammad encouraging everybody. For example, you may be know, knowing a beautiful story. A man, gentleman came to Prophet Muhammad He said, I am poor, I have nothing. Prophet Muhammad said, what do you have at your home? He said, I have two blankets. Other than that, nothing. He said, do you need two blankets or one blanket is enough? He said, one, I can survive with one blanket. He asked him to bring that blanket. And Prophet Muhammad sold that blanket in front of Adi. Anybody who need this blanket. Someone purchased that blanket. He said, take this money and he said, purchase an axe and go to wood, go to jungle, cut woods, start selling woods from tomorrow. And after start selling, you know, he started telling, he started going to the jungle, cutting woods and started the business. After some time, he was well off, he was independent. Prophet Muhammad asked him after some time, how, how do you feel now? He said, I'm independent, I'm better, I'm self-sufficient now. And Prophet Muhammad said, Al Yadil Uliya, Khairum Min Yadi Sufla. The hand which gives is better than hand which takes. Try to become a hand which gives. So this is the economic independence. This is also achieved by Prophet Muhammad in Medina. And he established a constitution. Historians say that in the history of human beings, it was the first constitution. That Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam established a written constitution in Medina with 58 articles in it, and 25 articles belongs to the non-Muslims of Medina. Non-Muslims were living in Medina. Their rights, how to protect them, how to protect their rights. These were the important things Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam cared about. And later on, he was given leadership. Muslims were given leadership, and Islam became the religion of Medina. And Medina became the first Islamic society and Islamic kingdom, or you can say the society with Islamic rule. This is how it happened. The people addressed the problems of the human beings. And this is the role you have to play like an ummah. And first thing you have to play in Ibrahim Khana Ummatan. As a ummah, as a Muslim community, the role of Muslim community is different in each society. If you are living in this society, if you are living in Sri Lanka or India, or if you are living in Western country, or if you are living in some other country, each country, problems of human beings are different. You as a Muslim community, you should care about the problems of the human beings, that what is my role to play in this society. For example, in Western society, broken families are a big problem now. Drug addiction is a big problem. Immorality is a big problem. You as a Muslim can play a big role to promote the ideas, the values of the, you know, family values and the values of getting rid of all bad habits. All these things you can play a role. Being an Indian Muslim, there are inequality is a big problem in India. And there are, you know, differences among the people, the upper caste, lower caste, and apartheid policies, untouchability, all these things are there. Equality is a big message of Muslims. So equality is a big message of Islam. Muslims can play a big role in India.
to address these problems and you know convey this message so in each society you can play a role of ummah a community khair ummah a best of community ukhrijat lin nas raised up from human kind this is the first characteristics muslim should adopt the second characteristics of ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam inna ibrahim kana ummatan qanita lillah he was the obedient servant of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the only place where qanita lillah is used for ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam is probably here in surah an-nahl in all other places in quran a similar word is used qanita lillah to ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam with the same meaning which is muslim ibrahim alayhi salatu was the word muslim is always tagged with ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam so many places in quran rabbana waj'alna muslimain lak wa min dhurriyyatina ummatan muslimatan lak wallahu tabarak wa ta'ala make me and my son ismail a muslim and bring forth a community muslim community which is you he is talking about a muslim community Uzurriya, Uzurriya means after, you know, the genera- after generations, which is the community of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, me and you, Muslim community, he is supplicated for that. And he chosen a title of Muslim for, for him, he was a Muslim. And ma kana Ibrahima Yahudiyam wala Nasraniyya wala king kana Hanifam Muslima. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam was not a Jew and not a Nasra, not a Christian. but he was hani from muslima a devoted muslim means the obedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second characteristics of ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam is being obedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect of your life become a muslim being obedient in every aspect of life and what is obedient mean what a muslim means for example deen al islam if you translate it deen the english translation is religion and you know for islam there is no translation you can translate religion of islam but if you see the religion is a very term with lot of limitations the word arabic deen is a very broad word in order to understand it for example in surah al fatiha we read maliki yawmid deen what's the meaning there it's not religion lord of the day of judgment deen is judgment there so judgment so deen actually means judgment adana means judgment in court when they give decisions they say adana so judgment it's a judgment and what kind of judgment or what kind of decision it's a judgment or decision that i will be adherent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all aspect of life this is called islam islam means being adherent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all aspect of life and how you, are, you should be adherent if you can see there in society for example if you see the whole geography of the world some society is established based on the principles of communism for example russia and many other countries some uh, you know countries are established in the principles of materialism for example western countries and other many other countries like that you can find so many isms in each countries and you can see so many every aspect of their life you can see the impact of their vision and impact their isms impact of, of their ideology so muslim means you should have an impact of your thinking in every aspect of your life and that is islam prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the last sermon people are in front of him all are hajis all are wearing ihram he talked about all aspect he talked about economic system for example he said waribal jahiliyati mawdu'atan he talked about usury he said the usury of the time of the jahiliya is cancelled is terminated there will be no more usury and he told about the practical steps there is no more usury to be paid to abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu his uncle so he talked about all these things so when you become muslim means it is not only inside the masjid 85% of your life is outside the masjid so in outside what is there your society is there your transactions are there your family life are there your social life is there your economic life is there your so many kind aspect of your life so you have to be muslim in every aspect of your life like ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was an adherent uh, you know adherent slave of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect of your life so the second aspect we have to adopt is qanita lillah or muslim 
becoming Muslim in every aspect of our life. And what is the third quality? Qanita lillahi hanifa. He was a devoted person, focused person. Not one day you are a Muslim and second day you forget about it. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, if you see from the youth to the last part of his life, when he was young, he declared, Inni bari ummim I am free from all kind of idolatry. And he continued in his middle age. Then he married, then he became old. At the age of 85, he was given a child. And then again, test continued. At the age of 100, he was asked to slaughter his child. And his mission is continuing. And he is working for his mission, devoted till the last part of his life. For example, for we normally think that childhood is for play. And youth, it's for studies and for enjoyment, for amusement, for romance and all kind of things. And middle age, it's for earning. You have to make more money and more money. And finally, when you become old, go to Hajj and get a title Haji and become a retired person, then adopt religion. And then adopt religious, this is what people think. But one of the questions asked for you when in the day of judgment is how you spend your youth. And one of the questions you will be asked is how you earned your money and where you spent it. And how many of us know that we are reaching the old age? We never know. So you have to be devoted in entire part of your life. You have to be focused and you always should have one aim, one goal. You should not be distracted. And there are so many distractions happening. So you cannot be distracted as a Muslim. Others may be distracted, but you have a purpose in life. Identify your purpose, identify your goal. Wherever you are, whatever circumstances, focus on your goal and that is Hanifa. And that's what we repeat every time. For example, when Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, some of the, the principles when we adopt. For example, one of his sunnah is sunnah of Udhiyya. Sunnata abikum Ibrahim about Udhiyya Prophet Muhammad sallam said, it is the tradition of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. What do you say when you make Udhiyya? We say, inni wajjahtu wajhiya lilladhi fataras samawati wal ardi harda hanifa. We say that we are turning our face to the creator of uh, you know, heavens and the earth with all focus and devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also we say, inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. Not only, the, we don't say that we are slaughtering this goat, but we say that not only this goat, my prayers, my supplications, and all my sacrifices, wa mahiyaya wa mamati, my life and my death is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My devotion is complete. This is what is your pledge. So this kind of devotion and this kind of focusing is necessary in your life. And one more, this is the third principle of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. And the fourth Muslim principle is, wa ma kana min al mushrikeen. He was not among the idolaters. He was not doing shirk. About shirk also we have a very confined kind of thinking. I remember a beautiful Urdu couplet. Allama Iqbal is a very famous Urdu poet. He has written a very revolutionary poetry. And one of the poetry says, Ye daur apne barahim ki talash mein hai. Sanam kada hai jahan la ilaha illallah. Which means the whole world is full of idols now. And world is looking for the Ibrahim of this time to break those idols. You can see the full of idols now. Now the shirk is not only when you keep your masjid's name as Masjid Tawheed or you know among Muslims also there are so many shortcomings. There are bid'ah, there are, we cannot call Muslims that shirk, bid'ah, then the door of reformation is closed. When you want to reform Muslims, reform Muslims, call them beautifully. Try to make them understand that what you are ma making mistakes. Shirk is above those things. Shirk, shirk is happening everywhere. When, you know, when there is no adherence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in somewhere, then that means it is an idol. Break it. When nothing is followed according to what Allah wa ta'ala has revealed, then it is an idol. Break it. And you have a bigger mission to break these idols. And Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was challenging even the ruler of the time. So shirk is not very confined thing. We have to have a broader concept of shirk and to establish tawheed in our society where we are living in. So this kind of broader concept of tawheed and shirk is necessary. So we have to be refrained from our shirk. 
all kinds of idolatry practices and we should be ready to break the idols wherever they are in our society. Whichever idols are there in our society. These are the fourth principle. And the fifth one is Shakir Ali An'umi. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was thankful to the blessings given to him. We all are given blessings. Once one gentleman came to Hassan Basri radiallahu ta'ala. He said, I am very poor, I have nothing. Hassan Basri radiallahu ta'ala looked at him. He is a young man, looks strong. He said, I have a million dinar with me. I can give it to you. But can you give your two eyes to me? He said, no, it's not possible. How can I do that? He said, okay, one leg and one hand. He said, how can I do that? He said, then you are a millionaire. You are a millionaire and you are a young man, you have energy and you are lamenting that you have nothing. Everybody should see what are the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wa ta'ala in every society has given you blessings. In this society, wherever, whichever society you are living in, don't see the negative aspect of it. See the positive aspect of it, that what can I do? For example, in Western society, there are so many challenges. But the freedom today, you can see so many Muslim scholars are coming up in America more than in any part of the world. I can name many of them. You can see the blessing. These are the blessings. See the positive aspect of given to Muslims in every society and be thankful and see what can I do in this atmosphere. So these are the five principles. Number one is you have to in, be a Muslim community, a khair ummah. Number two is you have to have a, you should be a good Muslim and adherent to the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three is you should be focused in your life. And number four is you have to understand the broader aspect of Tawheed and eradication of evils and eradication of idols from your society. And the fifth one is be thankful to the blessings given to you. And for that Allah wa ta'ala says, Ijtabahu wa hadahu ila sirati mustaqeem. For this we have chosen Ibrahim alayhi salam and we have guided him to the right path. And the same thing is told about you that huwa jittabakum, he has chosen you. Allah ta'ala has chosen you. Wama ja'ala alaykum fiddini min haraj. And he has not kept any shortcomings in your religion. Your religion is perfect. Deen al-Islam is perfect. You can be very successful in this life and life hereafter if you follow this. Barakallah, barakallahu lana wa lakum wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bi ayatihi wa dhikri al-hakeem innahu ta'ala jawadun kareemun malikun barru raoofur raheem wa rabbun halim Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen as salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-ameen وعلى آله وأصحابه الطاهرين أما بعد فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد بأدد من صلى وسام اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد بأدد من قعد وقام اللهم صل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين